Howdy, how's it going? Hello, uh, everyone. Just one sec while I sort through all this. Um, we are going to be playing Fall Guys. Well, I think mostly me, Brooke's going to join in a, a little bit in between, I think. But what we're going to do is we're going to try, I guess, a more podcast-esque approach. Um where Brooke is going to read some stories and stuff off of Reddit. We're going to talk about it. We, uh, um, we have, uh, we have, um, yeah. Fall Guys for the background, pretty much. I can already tell I'm going to be a god-awful at this. <laughs> you know what, just saying I'm um, saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to say I'm um a lot. Especially with something playing, but <laughs> that's... What I worry about. I guess maybe I should have. Should have what? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, Brooke's just looking up the... Uh, Brooke's just looking up the... Um, yeah, Reddit stuff right now, I think. And then we will get started. Luckily, we're on last gen, so these loading screens take forever. On well, I say that, and then Fall Guys loads. <laughs> Fair enough. Very nice. And yeah, y'all shouldn't be able to hear. I don't know if uh, if anyone's worried about not being able to hear the game audio we intended to leave it off fall guys just something to hopefully just watch in the background while we talk yeah yeah and yeah um i guess whenever you uh, yeah you have to log in okay You. You're never gonna sneeze. Ah, god dang it! She does that to me every time. <laughs> I, need, I always need to sneeze. Look at me! I'm so punk rock. You're kind of basic, actually. No, nah, this is this is kind of underground vibes. Is what we got going on here. Oh, I guess I have not logged on. Um, on your Xbox in forever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my Xbox usually stays unplugged. <laughs> yeah, she's just trying to log in. We swapped. Have me on the... Um, it's two. Of those last things you put in. Oh, okay. What did it just give me? It gave me some notification. Fair enough. All right. Yeah, just hold on for a sec while we all get all nice and set up. Oh, look there. You're online. Mm -hmm. Bam. Just like that. Yeah, so I guess we're just going to have to probably log out of each other. Yeah. There it is. Okay, then you just play. No, it's fine. The, if Fall Guys is free. I don't know what all that's about. No, it's fine. You just play, and I'm going to watch. You probably need to sign back in. I'm sending. Technically, that's what it says. Oh, yeah. Installing. 
Why is it in swelling? Your garden is strong. Yeah. All right, whatever. Now we're good, right? Dad gum. Literally. Stream doesn't want to go smooth. <laughs> wondering if it was going to load. It's taking a while. Yeah. This is like the point of background music. Oh my gosh, this chair is so squeaky. The point of like background music in the game is so there's not like this like awkward gap of silence. Kind of like me driving to work every day. Complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone the other day called me weird for that. I guess it probably is weird, but usually what I do is I just turn the radio off and just drive in silence. I think I have some mornings like that, too, where I just would rather. Is this controller dead? <laughs> Here. I, no, like. And then. Do you want to get up and go and get another controller? It's just in this one. Well, then. Ah, and of course, controller's dead. If you can't tell, uh, we're professionals. Oh my gosh, this chair. With the squeaking? Yeah, it kind of does its thing. Now online connect with friends. What what does this mean? Oh, epic. I see. I was like, what the heck? Why is this dude censored? They have an inappropriate name or something? What? Someone on my friends list is censored. Their name. Boy, now here we are. Uh, I'll show you. Let me see. See? Look, they're censored. Or maybe, maybe that's, that's literally, maybe that's their, literally name. their name. Yeah. Huh. Watch your toes, Lana. Come on, buddy. Um, how do I? Here? What do you mean here? Oh. Are you going to invite me? Uh, it just, you didn't you just say that you requested to join or something? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll just invite you. Here you go. Where'd that noise come from? The headphones. Oh. So fancy. Bam. All right, how are we doing this? Play. Okay. What do we want to do? Do us? Probably not. Probably still gross. Okay. Okay. So I am going to read something. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Okay. Stop. Don't look. Don't look at okay. me. My bad. I'm just a humble player of the game. Oh, you hate this one. Yeah, it's okay. It's 
Stop. You're looking again. Sorry. I was trying like, to find the right one. I'm just so used to snooping on your phone. <laughs> it's hard to look away. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to just wait for you to like start playing so it's not like. Okay. Okay. So here's the title. My boyfriend and I planned a one year break from each other. Okay. My. Bet. Okay, look, you're already ruining it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let, let me say that title again. My boyfriend and I planned a one-year break from each other. My 23 female boyfriend, 23 male, and I planned to... Oh, I read that wrong. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's start over one more time, ladies oh and gentlemen. Oh, my God, it's going so terribly. Okay, my boyfriend and I planned a one-year break from each other. My, 23 female, boyfriend, 23 male, and I planned to take a one-year break from each other. I met this man about a year and a half ago when I was not planning to date anyone and just have fun. He completely changed my life and showed me and showed me true happiness and encouraged me to chase my dreams when, when I never even had a, any in the first place. He became my constant, and we moved in very fast together, only spending a few days away from each other since we had been together. Even though I knew our passion and love ran deep, so did our pain. This was both of our first relationships, and we both did things to hurt one another. We had ups and downs like many relationships, but sometimes the same downs would just pop up over and over again, and it became really tiring for both of us. We would never really resolve our issues, just gloss over them because we were too tired to keep fighting, and we knew how much we both loved each other. Last night, we reached our breaking point. With how happy we make each other and how much we want to be together, it was never enough for ourselves to be happy. We absolutely just thought we were going to be done and with one another, and it would hurt me too much to just be without him. He made me want a future, one with marriage and kids and old age. We both hoped that maybe we would see each other again, but the uncertainty of it all was too much to bear. So we came up with the plan. One year. That is what we will give ourselves and our relationship. One year apart to work on it. One year to solidify who we are so we can be better for one another. So after some long hard tears and sitting on the ground holding hands, kissing his fingertips, we wished each other happy Thanksgiving, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, happy New Year, followed by our New Year's kiss, happy Easter, then happy Fourth of July. Then after that, we will see where our road takes us. I can only hope he holds on to the engagement ring he bought a long time ago, and he said he'll come back with an even better one. I know it sounds corny, but this is the only man meant for me, and I know it in my heart. I told him I will wait for him. I can't even look or think about another man because I know that even if I start dating someone in the future or even got married, as soon as I look into his eyes, I would throw it all away and come running back to him. So I'm only focusing on myself. I am not going to drink, party, date, etc., I'm spending more time with family, friends, working out, and focusing on my career path. So it's not goodbye. Just see you later. It feels better this way, and when you love someone, let them go. If it's true love, they'll come back to you. I promise you. Okay, so that, that's it? You done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You want me to start, or you want to go? You. Okay. So I read you a story. You tell me, like, you're perspective on it i see um it feels a little weird that she wants like i don't know that i think that a year apart is the way to fix it it seems like it could potentially amplify problems if i, I get everyone's different but you're talking about this is the only person for you and like all this other stuff and like I don't know it seems like you already like a year break is to figure out if you really want to be together but that like in my opinion but that obviously isn't what this is so uh, I think they should just work on their issues get like I don't know if they can uh, how old do they say they were in their I think one was 23, 23 and, 20, oh, 23, both 23, yeah. I mean, I'm so not too far removed from us, but I know at that age, 
we probably couldn't have afforded couples therapy or whatever. Mar or like, you know, I get that they aren't married, but you get what I'm saying. Some kind of therapy. I, I don't know. I don't think that splitting up for a year was the right call here, basically, is my big takeaway on it. Because, um, yeah, you're not going to even see is if you want to be with someone else like I don't know what what are your thoughts I just kind of wonder like whose idea was like who brought it up you know because like if it was the guy's idea if he brought it up and she's like okay I'll wait for you then that's kind of weird you know what I mean yeah. If he's like, hey, I want to take a break for a year. But then he was like, I don't know, like, I'll buy you a bigger and better ring. Like, um, that's almost like he's, like, trying to buy a year yeah. away from her, you know? Yeah. No, it's, uh, I think it's pretty weird. I agree They're with only, you. Yeah. I didn't think. What? No, keep going. I didn't consider who potentially asked um, that, uh, yeah, if he asked and uh, then I view this a little differently and that, yeah, he wasn't so, so sure, but if they're supposedly both so sure, then yeah, I don't know why it, it, it if he does, if he has no hesitation, then either this poster was lying about everything, like. You know, that she kind of does want to. Or, I don't know. Maybe they're just weird. Hmm. Is, that a, is that a fine take? That if they're really both so confident in their relationship and think they're both going to come back, that maybe they're just weird and just want to take a year apart for whatever reason? I don't know. I feel like your issues, I'm not always the best at talking them out, but like your issues are better if you stick around and try to fix them instead of oh my god we've re reached a breaking point uh we need to spend a year apart to right the ship like i don't know that's just weird thinking to me i don't yeah. know something's weird here personally yeah i think so too but i mean like is it kind of common like to be like i guess more open about that and free Oh, you. <laughs> I just friggin' qualified. Like five Isn't it kind of common for you to be, I mean, I don't know, like now it's 2024, but for you to have just like different viewpoints on relationships and I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe they're just kind of weird and maybe they think it's kind of normal, but they're just want to see, I don't know, I could never. No, that's what I'm saying. I could never. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes and like, hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I just. Yeah. I think I would rather just like break it off. Like if we're going through a lot and like we can't, we aren't recovering, then I think I would rather just call it what it is, you know? Yeah. Just, um, unfortunately, a failed relationship and yeah. we're both going to. You know, we both care for each other, but it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe, oh, and maybe that's the route that they need to take too, if their issues are really that. That that's what I was saying. Like, that is so weird to me about them. Is like, yeah, you're literally talking about this perfect relationship, but then that supposedly you had problems that are so bad that you need to spend a year apart from each other. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's my thing. Either something something isn't adding up or they just have a, we'll call it a unique take on relationships. <laughs> you were the first one to eliminate them. I know. That was just funny. Because <laughs> I start off so well. Um, yeah. I don't know how much more I have to say on this one, honestly. Yeah, I agree. It is I have weird. a juicy one. Okay. I hold my phone up so you won't see it. Oh, my bad. Okay. So, I'll wait for you to get into a new game. All right. 
Wisconsin. Okay, whatever. Oh, am I just gonna level up like crazy? Right. Whatever. Let's just get okay. Ren has been just like absolutely just like she got that piece of paper that you took from her. I didn't mm. see it. That's what she's been smacking on. Yummy. Yeah. I guess just a little fiber in her that. <laughs> And she's gonna eat it anyway. Yeah, literally. What happened? I guess you canceled my I didn't. Food. I don't know. Interesting. Hold uh, on before we. I oh, really want to Don't do it this. in the mic. Or you wanted to do it in the mic. I didn't want to. And I was holding it over here. You weren't. But, you were holding it literally right there. Imagine if someone was listening. They sound like a gunshot. Uh, no, nah, that's just a crack of a good cocaine cola. Oh, my God. Don't say that on stream. You're going to get us flagged. No, nah, that's what coca stands for in Coca-Cola. That was just that was just a deep a deep state reference. I don't know. Deep state. Okay, probably here we is. go. Anyway. Here's the title. My mother says she won't come to my wedding because of my second boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> okay. Strap in. This is a seriously long one. I, 21 female, have two boyfriends, both 21 male. We are in a polyamorous but relationship where I am dating both of them, and they are just friends with each other. I only recently started dating my second boyfriend, who will be B. I have been dating my first boyfriend, A, over the two years before we decided to bring B into the relationship. I told my mom about it a couple months ago, and she cried like I've never seen her cry before. She loves A like her own son and is really looking forward to my marriage with him. She had stated during a long sit-down conversation that she is very scared that I will lose him and scared of how this will affect the family and my future children, which I do plan to have. I tried to comfort her, and we came to an agreement that our relationship would not be hurt by this and that she would just have to wait and see what happens. She stated that no matter what, she will love me and be there for me, but that she didn't see this ending well. A, B, and I have listened to her concerns and have discussed them and have been trying to be very careful and communicative about how we've been handling this whole relationship. What we've... What we expect for each other, what we expect about child raising, what we ex expect, they wrote except everywhere, but okay. what we expect about living together and what we expect about family events, etc. I am someone with extreme anxiety and I overthink and pay too much attention to Reddit, so I've been asking both about how we would deal with anything that comes to mind. Currently, outside of my mom's opinion, our relationships with each other are extremely balanced, peaceful, hopeful, communicative, and growing. Now on to what happened the other day. I just got home from a week-long trip with A to go see B, who lives over a day's drive away. All three of us had a wonderful time, and it's an irreplaceable memory for us, and we can't wait to make it happen again. My mom was aware of this trip and disapproved, but I've always been a let's-see-what-happens person, unless it's dangerous. Me and A talked more into detail about what we wanted to do for our wedding in a couple of years, and A told me that he wanted B to be a part of the wedding party, a groomsman. I brought it up to, I brought it up as an idea, but A seemed like he thought it was obvious that B would be a groomsman. He's fully accepted B into our lives. I was discussing what me and A wanted at our wedding with my mother days after we returned from the trip, and she asked me if B was going to be there. I told her that he was going to be a part of the wedding party. She even thought... She then made the comment, now I understand why you want a private security, in a joking tone, but it set off my anxiety. I reacted a little strongly and said, if you cannot contain yourself for one day at my wedding, then don't come. She then told me, I might not. I might just give you the money and go on a vacation. She was completely serious when she said this. I told her that my dream was to have her plan my wedding with me and that her not being there would break my heart. She told me that it would break hers too, but... Then, but that she didn't know if she could manage not to confront B, who she sees 
in a he's trying to ruin my daughter in A's relationship tense. My mom and I agreed that we would wait a couple years until the wedding is actually happening to make a final decision on it, but I'm so anxious now. I'm scared that my mom, who I love and trust the most second to my men, will not be a part of something that I've never even thought about doing with her. Again, sorry it's so long, context is important. Um, I posted this here because I was afraid it would get removed. Oh, okay, just kidding. That's it. Okay, there is an edit and there is an update. So, what do you think about that? Um, I mean, just because I, uh, I couldn't see myself in a polyamorous relationship, but, okay, whatever. Like, disregarding that. Like, it's what they've chosen to do. They're fine with it. They all think it's going to be hunky dory or whatnot but um i think the mom's kind of making it about herself and uh wow i think the mom's kind of making it about herself and uh needs to get a grip and not ruin her daughter's wedding and like to put all these thoughts in her head like i don't know that's my thoughts on it. And yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, like, personally me, like, I mean, if I'm just getting, like, real hot and spicy with my takes, like, yeah, I find it a little weird that your boyfriend's in the wedding party. I find it <laughs> a little weird that you have a boyfriend. But it's, like, whatever. That's fine. It's what you chose to do. It seems like your husband's cool with it, or your future husband. So, you know, hey, that's all hunky-dory like I said just because I wouldn't do it doesn't you know I guess invalidate it uh, but yeah I think if I was to say like if someone's in the wrong or advice I'd probably say do what makes you happy crap it's your wedding um, you and I spent more time than we should have listening to other people's advice um, and I think you just got to go for it with your wedding if that's really what you want. And isn't the wedding just in a couple years, she said? Yeah, that's what she kept saying. The, then, <laughs> the, the, I, I think that's, that it's probably more of an issue in a couple years. Like, what if you ain't even dating this second yeah. boyfriend anymore or whatever? B, I guess. Like, I don't know. Okay, okay. Th thinking about that with the few years. Uh, you're worrying over nothing. Uh, there is nothing to worry about. There is no wedding that is guaranteed happening, from what I can tell. If you're talking about it in a few years. Did they mention whether they're already engaged? No, I don't even think she said, no. Then, so this is literally like a pure hypothetical, like, how you and I, whenever we were just dating, we would talk about our wedding or whatever. And yeah, because she, she keeps saying, like, we're, I'm dating both of them. So it's not. Okay, you're probably stressing over nothing. And, <laughs> yeah, you might end up choosing one of them. You're the one that you plan to marry. So, like, I don't know, is it is it weird to <laughs> call one of them the main one and the, the side one? Because you're marrying one of them. You ain't marrying the other one. Wow, uh, that's what this comment literally says. She's marrying A, not B. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so, like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, here's the update. I called my mom last night and apologized for being so aggressive and rude to her. She didn't even seem to be like she was really worrying about it. So that's good. She forgave me and thanked me, and we had a wonderful talk about her day. All is well, and I found some support groups that I can join to help me learn about more to how to handle my situation. Thanks to this post. So thanks, everyone. I hope I can learn to remain open-minded and accepting of people's situations and ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that seems okay. like the best ending that could have yeah. possibly happened. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there you go. Literally, like, yeah, you... 
we're stressing over nothing, like I said. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think that that one ended as well as it was going to. And, yeah. That's really all there is to say about it, I guess. Unless there's some other, like, crazy update or something. But it doesn't sound like it. Sounds like... Because literally, it's still a couple years away. Yeah, I agree, I think. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, I have another one, and then do you want to share yours? Yeah. Okay. Here's the title. My friend won 15 k at the casino from a $30 bet. He won't share a single cent, not even a drink. Okay. I went to the casino with some friends earlier this week, all early 20s. My friend played ultimate poker, and he put $30 on the... Ooh, is this Ante? Aunt? Ante. Ante, and blind bet, and got a royal flush. So that oh. gave him a bit over 15 k Obviously, we had a massive celebration on the spot because that was a crazy win. Without a doubt. Like we were cheering for ages on the table and there was a crowd around us. The dealer couldn't believe it and one of the pit bosses asked if we would like a photo. The thing is, he didn't even bother tipping. Not even a cent. Like if that was me, I would tip at least a few hundred dollars. But on top of that, afterwards, he said he would just keep the money for himself we thought that he would buy us a round of drinks or something or some food at least, but he decided not to. I wasn't going to push him or anything, but we were like hinting at him like, hey, man, that's a lot of money. Get us a round of drinks or something. Ha ha ha. <laughs> buy us something, even a quick snack. And he's like, nah, I'll keep it for myself. The rest of us either won a bit or we were down a few hundred. And no, I wasn't trying to get him to give us a few hundreds. Obviously, that's unreasonable, but not even a few bucks for a drink? It's not like he has financial problems or anything, but I think that's quite stingy. If I won that amount of money, then I would be buying everyone on that table some drinks. He's a cheerful guy in general, so it's out of character. When he gambled before, he has either won or lost just two figures, or in, low, or in the low hundreds at most, and even then, we'd share snacks with the rest of the group. So this is out of character. He was still cheerful, though, but he was just simultaneously not wanting to share anything that night. So I have to emphasize that I'm not entitled to anyone's money, but I just feel like if you win that much, you should celebrate by buying your friend's drinks because I know for a fact that I would 100% um, that I 100% would, and I'd also tip the dealers a good amount. Okay. So, to start us off tipping the dealer... Yeah, you couldn't throw 50 bucks down. Like, because, yeah, th th that's part of the reason that I don't like playing the table games uh, at the casinos is tipping the dealer. Because, like, it, it, like here, here's the truth of it. I'm going to lose money, most likely. And, um, and yeah, so... Uh, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna lose money, like I don't want to lose extra, like tipping the dealer. Um, I know that that probably seems a little sorry, but uh, you know it is what it is. But yeah, if you win big like that, yeah, I mean it's it's first of all it's customary as well, um, and uh, yeah, you should tip the dealer. I do. It was good that this individual said they don't feel entitled to the money, but you're saying one thing, and then you're also saying another thing. It really seems like you feel entitled That's kind to of what some I was of that thinking money. Too. That's what I was um, thinking too. And so, yeah, I'm I'm gonna call kind of BS on you. Uh, <laughs> you sound awfully entitled, but if it was me. Yes, I would be giving my friends, we'd all, you know, we'd all win that night. Uh, would they get an even split or anything? No. But would I give drinks and maybe even a couple hundred bucks to like, if I just had a couple friends there? Sure. Because I think that anyone that I would um, take to the casino with me would uh, do the same thing. Uh, so... Do I think it's unreasonable that you expected 
a drink or something? Yes, ish. Uh, okay. It seems like you really wanted that to happen. Uh, yeah. It's unreasonable to expect anything, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> like, I understand what you're saying because you're saying you would do that in his shoes or your friend's shoes. What? And I would do the same if I was that friend. But that doesn't mean that I expect... Uh, f okay. I may, I may be a little butthurt about it, but I'm not going to go make a whole Reddit post. Yeah, I like... Saying I'm butthurt. Like, I mean, it's... At the end of the day, he won. Yeah. Yeah, his money it, on the line. It wasn't your money, uh, yeah. presumably. Like now, and what if he had like medical expenses to pay or something, or like he was in debt or something, and he wanted to save that money for himself, and you're over here upset that he didn't spend a couple hundred dollars on you? Like that's a couple hundred dollars that could go to something that he really needs. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you might be, you know, really good friends with this person, but that doesn't mean that you know everything about them either. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. They 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 could very well have a reason that they want to hoard all that money and it is nothing personal. So That's a great point actually. That's a yeah. fantastic point. Like I just made the, up this like random scenario in my brain of like him needing to pay his grandmother's hospital bills or something. Yeah. And I mean that's just so messed up on the friend's part to expect and then to go make a Reddit post basically calling his friend like a bad friend because he didn't buy him a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's so messed up in my opinion. I mean, there are like, there are fairly serious things that I don't share with my friends and I don't think that like, I think I expect for my best friends that we share a lot, but, and I expect that you and I share everything, but these are just friends. Yeah, the, I agree. And so, yeah, there's some things you're going to leave, you're going to leave on the table, or not on the table, you know. Yeah. You never I think, on the table. you know, if it was, you know, if I was the person who won all that money, I think I could theoretically then turn it around on you and be like you know i just did this awesome thing and you're not even gonna buy me a drink yeah what do you think about that <laughs> I, I don't know how i feel about that one i think i think if you win a bunch of money and then you're like why did you buy me a drink <laughs> <laughs> like okay that's a little no i disagree with you on that one there, no you can't turn it around on the friend but also, I, I do just like in the post, like, as if they're claiming to be an expert on their friend's, like, economic status. Like, are you their accountant to say, like, it's not like he's bad off or anything? Yeah. Like, like yeah, you don't know, surely. Like, unless, and let's even say that the friend is the type that talks openly about finances. Uh, are they the embellishing type, too? Like, and now that's an issue with the friend at that point. Um, but like, yeah, unless you have seen their bank account statements, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. I like get it. what the heck? <laughs> yeah. I literally just, I literally just thought about that, about saying, oh, and he's, you know, my friend is, I keep saying he, I don't remember if they said it was a he or she. I don't think it did either. I'm just going to say he just for the sake of keeping it simple. Oh, it does say he. Um, yeah, he won't share a single cent. Okay. Well, yeah, you don't know his financial financial situation. So, um, if, yeah. you, if you did, then I would change my thoughts. Not really, because you're still expecting money from someone that doesn't have to give you anything. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. yeah. All I can say, what I can really say, my biggest thoughts on this is, dang, I wish I was that friend. 
Like, <laughs> which Lauren. one? The one that expects to drink or the one that <laughs> no, the, wants money? I mean, honestly, both. I wish I was just there to see it happen. Yeah. And like, and happen to someone I'm close with. But also, I wish that I had fifteen thousand more dollars in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's really my huge takeaway from it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, do you want to read yours now? Yeah. Okay. Let me. Switch. Oh, yeah. Let's here. just switch spots. Yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter if you have that headset on or not. Yeah. Careful, scooch. We're doing a little change up real quick. Uh. You have to find it. Uh, no. It's going to be pretty. Hey, this is kind of fun though. Like, I like doing this. I mean, it beats just trying to like make stuff up on the fly, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow. What? Um, Don't start it quite yet. I want to read this one for a sec. It just popped up on my thing. Okay, all right. Here, I'll, I'll get to mine in a sec. This is honestly really similar veins to mine. Wait, what? wait for me to wait for... Okay. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and go. Uh, I'm going to say W-I-B-T-A. Would I be the a-hole if I abandoned my child? Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello, Reddit. This is a throwaway account. I am 37 male, and my wife is 39 female. We had been married for 10 years, and we have a daughter who is 9 female going on 10. Me and my wife had a fight, and she said something about my daughter not being mine. I kept a straight face, but after she realized what she said, she left and went to bed. I'd never thought about my daughter not being mine, but I had to know if she was or wasn't. Long story short, I got a paternity test, and I wasn't her father. I showed it to my wife, who begged and pleaded with me not to get a divorce, but I told her that I was. But I told her that I was. I told my family and friends what happened, and they said I should cut them out of my life, including my daughter. I don't want to raise a child that's not mine, nor do I want to pay for her either. My wife keeps calling me, telling me not to make her and our child go homeless, but I don't care if she is homeless or not. She shouldn't have cheated. For people wondering where her real dad is, he's dead. He died a few years ago. So would I be the a-hole if I did just cut her out of my life? Oh, my God. Uh, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Listen, I'm not, I'm not a parent or anything. So, I mean, I guess I really don't understand his perspective on it you know like how he feels but like that is so messed up yes you're yes you're the a-hole oh my god yeah i'm gonna have to agree completely so he said okay just to clarify he said that he raised her and stuff right yes for uh they had been married for 10 years and they had a daughter that's going on nine years old and then he's basically like yeah screw this girl yes oh my god he is saying that the people in his life advised him to cut both of them out of who who's the people in his life his daughter's a person in his life uh, i know and it, it it ain't like you know she's nine years old she is going to be aware of things it isn't like she's you yes. know like one or two like still you know yeah you're talking about a you know not fully functioning like in terms of i guess like mental Whatever, but definitely old enough to be betrayed and damaged for life. Yeah. I mean, regardless of her age, she'd be damaged for life, losing her father. Yeah, but. I agree. And, oh my God, that stresses me out because I'm like, I'm trying to like put myself, oh, I'm trying to put myself 
in the daughter's shoes and just like imagine like waking up one day or like getting home from school one day and your father's like I don't want anything to do with you and you don't know any different like did he tell her already or like did he tell the daughter like hey I'm not your real father or does she know oh my gosh okay but from the mom's like that's so messed up. Oh, that's effed up. You you probably you should just take that to your grave. Probably. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, I mean, cause well, it, I, okay, I don't, I wouldn't want to say that, but well, here's what you did as the mom, by y'all were having a fight, correct? So hold on, me and my wife had a fight, and she said something about my daughter not being mine. Um, okay, what you did there is you ended your relationship. That fight was serious enough that you ended your relationship. Because that is what to take away from all of this, in my opinion. You cheated, not just, you know, cheated. You had a, someone else's child. Like, you you also, like, mentally cheated at this point, I guess. You could say that because, I mean, physically and mentally is what I'm saying. Yeah. And so... Yeah, you've already, you know, the relationship's over by you saying that. And you're going to, you have the audacity to beg him not to, like, you know, make you and your daughter homeless. Now, who cares about you? Like, if I'm that dad, I don't care if you're homeless. I'm just going to be real with you. Um, but the daughter, yeah, you. You are her father. Yeah. You're her father. <laughs> you did, raised did, her. Did, did you just stop loving her or what? That's what like, I'm like thinking. I mean, but but also, also like, he, he, here's the thing, just to try to give the father a little bit of credit, uh, or not, not credit, but just try to, or I guess not the father, but, uh, you know, just to try to be in his shoes. I don't know what kind of absolute pain and agony he's experiencing at the moment. Like... Yeah, but... I mean, like, but pain and stuff makes you do weird things. Yes, like, but could you imagine, like, how the daughter is going to feel Well, she for finds sure. That out? I agree. I agree. Like, it's, it's very jacked up on his part. Like, he is... In this situation, he's in the wrong. Um... But I'm, I like I said, I'm just trying to give him some kind of consideration to potentially what he's going through. I don't know how he's feeling. I don't know how I'd be in that situation, honestly. But I'd have to think that I'd be like, you know what? Um, you know, this is my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have nine years of memories with her. And, I mean, it like, like it's the exact same thing, like... With a step parent that comes into, I guess it's not the exact same thing because you thought this was your daughter. Yeah. It, it, it it's this maybe this is a more difficult one because I am trying to see it through his eyes. I think he should stick around with the daughter. Um, maybe. Okay, I was going to say maybe adopting her, but surely she has your last name. Like, yeah. surely she is also legally yours. Like, too. I bet. I mean, he didn't know, so surely his name is on her birth certificate. Yeah. And so I, I was going like to say, that. like, maybe adopting could help you mentally if that's what you needed. Yeah. But I... Um, I'm thinking best course of action. Here's what I'm thinking. You know, this may be so messed up to say, but... Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you divorce that lady, and I'm oh, thinking you. you just get full custody of your daughter because she's your daughter. You raised her. You get full custody, and you just you just cut cut out mom from your life. Oh, hmm. I mean, that's your daughter. You know her routines. You know how she is every day. You know everything about her. That's your daughter. Not to sympathize with a cheater, but. Crap, it's her daughter too. But yeah, she 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 messed up. But I mean, like, you really think daughter is gonna forgive her? 
No, probably as not. As easily as that? No. Yeah, so probably if... It, daughter's probably going to want to go with dad anyway. Should the dad be honest with the daughter and say, hey, I'm not your real father? I or think, does he keep it to the grave? No, I think that dad probably tells mom that he needs to tell her. That dad needs to tell her? No. Wait, what? No. Dad tells mom that... She needs to tell daughter. Okay. Because I thought you said he at first, but hmm, she. Hmm. You would hope so. The, obviously, dad is just gone right now. Uh, mm. That man has absolutely dipped and yeah. <laughs> has effectively already cut off ties, it sounds like, for the most part. Um, but. Uh, you, the, what you would really hope out of this situation is that they both be yeah. reasonable adults, I guess, and ha be able to sit down like, hey, our relationship's over, which, like I said, <laughs> mom ended the relationship when she said yeah. that. She, she came to be hurt or, like, assumed that that wasn't going to happen. You ended the relationship whenever you said that. It was over. I think... Any reasonable human would have ended it, uh, in my opinion. But maybe any reasonable humans. Kind of harsh to say, but either way, besides so, the point. So, does it say how long they had been together? Yeah, ten years. So they'd been together ten years, but the daughter is nine. Yeah. So that like they'd been married for ten years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it didn't say how long they've been together. Married for wait, 10 years. Wait, 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 hold on, backtrack. So, the wait, they've been married. Did it talk about like taking a break or something like that? No, no. So, it's that the wife cheated on him? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what he says. Oh, he, he said, does say that. Okay. I mean, yeah, he literally said, um, but I don't care if she is homeless or not, she shouldn't have cheated. Yeah. Yeah, that's messed up. And she's kept that a secret for that long. Wow. Yeah. Um, some of the comments that the top one is that poor little girl. She doesn't know you're not her daddy. Yeah. Um, yeah, true. Um, for the poor little girl, he is her daddy. And then this one, uh, what I agree with, get a divorce and stay in the kid's life. Yeah, I agree. Oh, hey, look, here's what you said. If it was me, I dropped the wife and tried to get custody of my daughter. Yep. Biology isn't the only thing that makes a person family. Absolutely. <laughs> Dad gum. Okay. All right. The one, the one that I have next isn't as... Uh, Juicy. Yeah, it ain't as juicy, but it, um, I read a little bit of it, and it looked like it would hit right where I wanted it to. Um, let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. This is on cat advice. Mm. <laughs> Boyfriend doesn't want to take cat when we move. <gasps> oh, no. New account to ask people's opinions. My boyfriend and I have three cats, two that we adopted from the shelter and one that started showing up one day, Mochi. Mochi has been part of the family for over two years now and is... Ren, dadgummit. Okay. All right. Ren. <coughs> dadgummit. All right. I'm going to reread that. Okay. Boyfriend doesn't want to take cat when we move. New account to ask people's opinions. My boyfriend and I have three cats, two that we adopted from the shelter and one that started showing up one day, Mochi. Mochi has been a part of the family for over two years now and is very healthy and happy. However, when he first arrived, his fur was disgusting and his tail was extremely tense. He was very skittish and would only appear to steal the cat food from our garage. It took him weeks to be comfortable around people. He now comes inside every night to sleep in our bed. 
He is very cuddly and his tail is very relaxed. He has even been wearing a collar for the last couple of months. The problem is, my boyfriend and I are moving soon and he thinks we should leave Mochi just in case he has other family. I fully believe Mochi was astray because of how rough he was when he started stealing food from us, especially because of how skittish he was. I think he is our cat now. He is microchipped with our information. He wears a collar with our contact info. He stays at our house. What do you guys think? I don't want to abandon. What do you guys think? I don't want to abandon my cat. Oh my gosh. That's your cat. So, okay. Uh, do you have any other thoughts? Oh my gosh. It's my take. You read it to me. Sorry. I would just say, I don't know. That's such a hard one. It's just a little kitty. You know? Yeah. Why did that person jump so far? I would just say, sneak them. <laughs> just put them in your car and just take them. I think that's the only option. If your boyfriend, I don't know. What do you think, Hater? Um, so, I think that boyfriend is talking about how he might have another family, like we should leave him just in case um, that, you know, he isn't our cat or whatever. But, brother, you went out and you microchipped him with yeah. your information. You put a collar on him with your information. He, cut, uh, or, yeah, Mochi, he comes inside and sleeps with y'all he hangs around your house pretty much always. <laughs> it's your cat. <laughs> you are you claimed him long before you decided if you were moving or not. It's your cat, and uh, you you don't abandon your animals. You take your animal. I mean, that's something that I think you and I both feel pretty strong yeah. uh, on and agree. Is that um, once you get an animal, you're Usually, for the most time, locked in, locked and loaded. So, so, here's my question. So, is the cat, like, mostly mostly an outside cat, and it just comes in to sleep with them? Yeah, let me look and see. Because could you imagine, like, they move, and then, like, the, the first night there, the cat is, like, trying to, like, come in to sleep with them, and nobody lets him in? Yeah. That's so sad. Uh, I couldn't handle, like, all that on my heart. I don't know. <laughs> um, it doesn't really say. Um, I'm going to assume that the cat's probably an outside cat. I mean, it could be, like, you know, my family's cat, like, inside, outside, mostly just comes in at night, you know? Yeah. But, but I agree, like, if you microchip this cat and you put a collar on them, that's your cat. The cat distribution system has chosen you. You have been chosen. That's your cat. So I really like, here is the top comment. Uh, you don't microchip a cat and then go, oh, maybe the owners want their cat back. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like he's not being truthful with the reason. But Kitty should come with for sure. It's your cat now. And then the next one says, not to mention the collar. How can you possibly think it's someone else's cat and they've just left the collar on? Yeah, so the collar has been on for, yeah, I think it said for three months? For the last couple months. Yeah, if it had other owners, you don't think they're going to see this collar? Yeah, and literally be like, what the heck? Yeah. Who put a collar on our cat? Yeah, exactly. Um... And uh, you're telling me at the very least they aren't going to look up the info and call and be like, hey. Uh, this is our cat. <laughs> yeah, or whatever info you have on it. Surely it's your phone number. But, like, yeah. um, if you for some reason have your address, I don't know. I feel like that's weird. The phone number makes more sense. But let, let's assume they have some way to contact them. Oh, yeah, call her with our contact info. Yeah, the other owners are going to. Con surely contact you and be like or if they don't contact you if they're like oh someone else has claimed our cat and they're just not worried about it then you that's your cat now yeah i agree 
Either way, yeah, the, I agree. The color's too obvious. Yes, that's not someone else's cat. That mm-hmm. is your cat. Um, I agree. Okay. Fully. Yeah, that's... That's so messed up of him. I agree. There must be some sort of, like, underlying reason why. Yeah, I think potentially a uh, boyfriend just doesn't want this cat, maybe. Yeah. For whatever reason. Boyfriend doesn't but, want But, you know, it is what it is. Like, you... You got it. You claimed it. You microchipped it. It's yours. Mm-hmm. For sure. I'm just shocked I've never seen this game before. Yeah, me neither. Hmm. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you have another story you wanted to share? Mm, those were my two. Why are you smiling like that? Uh, it's just, I just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, I mean I only came with one honestly, because they I'd looked it up and well I'd opened Reddit and then saw that cat one I was like well the Reddit overlords are listening to me, yeah and what's crazy though is the first post though on Reddit was recommending the A I T A H subreddit that I've never once viewed been interested in at all. Your phone is probably listening to you. Yeah. It is a for sure listening. <laughs> Do you want me to find another one? Sure. Maybe one more. Yeah, let's see. And then I think we can call it quits today. Um, I've been, I haven't been playing this whole time, but uh, that's fine. I've just been in this game. Yeah. I keep missing the chance to leave. Okay, I got it. Okay. I haven't, I've barely skimmed over this, but it's, okay, no. I'd actually rather save this for um, another one of these. Is it too long? Yeah, it's too <laughs> long. Uh, how do I save it? I literally... Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. All right, saved it. Let me try to find a short one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Ren. Ren, do you want to read a story? You stretching? I know, biscuit girl. You're a good girl. Can I pick out that? Ab- okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm All right. Why, why can't these be short? Fine. I'll save this one. <laughs> Dad gum it. Okay. Maybe we're just done. I already started them out. Okay. You're right. You're right. Um, okay. Uh, we'll try this one. It's at least the shortest out of the last few I've seen. Why are you doing that? She was having a good time. Um, am I the a-hole for being upset my sister's pregnancy was kept from me? I, 17 female, live with my mother, my sister, 29 female, and my niece, 5 female. I'm autistic and really sensitive to noise. Baby cries are among the worst. When my niece was born, she had colic, and it was the worst experience of my life. Her nursery was right next to my room, and our walls are thin, so I never slept. The nursery and my room are both in the basement, while my mom and sister are upstairs, so I was the one dealing with it when the baby woke up a lot of the time. I had a lot of meltdowns over this. It completely wrecked my performance in school. It sounds stupid, but I genuinely became uh, unalivable. The constant noise, being expected to care for the baby when my sister couldn't, the sleep deprivation all felt like 
heck, that would never end. The colic lasted four months, but even after that, I really struggled. My niece yells all the time when she's playing. Her idea of fun is just making screeching noises all the time. As soon as she realized it upset me, she'd do it intentionally in my ear, especially on car rides until I'm sobbing. It drives me insane. If my niece is home, there is constant noise. My mother and sister are able to tune out noise, but I can't. I can hear something. It's like, I, if I can hear something, it's like I can't focus on anything else. To be clear, I understand that none of this is my niece's or sister's fault, and it's not anyone's responsibility other than my own. I'm just trying to paint an idea of why this is so overwhelming for me. I don't dislike kids. Living with them is just a lot for me. Yesterday, I learned that my sister is over six months pregnant, and they've known for four months. I'd noticed her stomach was larger, but my sister is pretty overweight, so I never really became suspicious until very recently. They told me that they were planning on keeping it from me for as long as possible until I noticed, which really terrified me. I really wish I got more time to prepare for this. I'm terrified to do this semester of school, knowing that by the end I'll be living with a baby again. I don't expect my sister to not have another baby or anything. I just feel really hurt and betrayed that they were planning to hide it for as long as possible. I know I'm not owed this information. It just feels like courtesy considering we're living together. I've been considering moving to my dad's in another state, but he lives with my brother who is abusive towards me. And it seems like an awful idea anyways because I'm going into the last semester of my senior year of high school. I mentioned that I wished they told me sooner and my sister got upset at me because I'm a child who doesn't need to know all my business. Am I the a-hole? Oh my gosh. You just got a couple more months, sis. You got to just tough it out for a couple more months and then you can move out on your own. Oh, for, okay, for the 17-year-old. Yeah. So, okay. And then, you know, honestly, until then, you need to, I think, sit down with your sister and you guys need to have a conversation about maybe boundaries and, you know, because it's not your job to take care of her baby. You need to ask her maybe to switch rooms. I wonder if that would help. Because, I mean, if your room is right next to the baby's room, then, I mean, you are more, and you're waking up because she's crying at night. You Just ask if you can switch rooms or ask if there's a different solution for you. Sit down and have, you're about to be an adult. Sit down and have an adult conversation with her. But until then, you just got a couple more months. Yeah, I didn't think about the move out situation for her. Um, was that the end of your thought, by the way? Yeah. Um, I thought about the situation for the 29-year-old that is now having another child. Uh, she's not impregnating herself. It So, okay, maybe the, like... Is she just making, like, is, does she just have terrible taste in men and they're just, like, impregnating her and then leaving her alone to fend for herself? Why is this actually even a situation? Like, so I get, I get, I understand how it would be a situation. Like, it just in general, honestly, I get that you could have been unlucky twice and maybe that's what happened here. But, um, you're potentially romantically involved enough with a guy to at least for the second one first guy presumably a bum father or something but you're presumably romantically involved enough with the person to have a child um why aren't they stepping up and helping this mother uh i don't know uh, I, I get that maybe it's not possible and maybe she is just really bad with her choices and not having, because I mean, it really kind of sounds like the mom, they're living with the mom and I don't know. I'm just trying to think about my mom. She'd be pissed if I was, a her daughter and got, yeah, get, getting pregnant once and having to live with her, you know, like. Ah, oh, that sucks. It didn't work out. 
But to go and do it twice, if that's what's happening here. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, yeah, and I also think that there's at least a little bit of bad uh, mothering going on. Not to try to criticize too much because I get that I'm, you know, not in their shoes and... I guess who am I to say what bad parenting's like? I'm not a parent. But I was just thinking about the whole thing where this four-year-old niece knows that something angers you and will, like, screech in your ear in the car and stuff on purpose. I think the mother should, you know, have that stopped. Yeah. It should be punishing this child, at least on in that regard. I get that for the broad picture of, you know, for the broad picture, what this screeching is, you know, negligible. Uh, are you the a-hole for being mad that your sister kept it from you? Uh, inconclusive? It, I mean, I understand that you have autism or that, you know, this girl has autism. I have a little brother with autism. I am very sympathetic towards it. And I get that it's a spectrum and people can be worse off than my brother. Like, and, you know, not worse off, but more, you know, prone to a lot of the, you know, I guess, I don't want to say ticks of autism, but you get what I mean. Um... But it also kind of sounds like you're being a baby, too. Yeah. Uh, and I obviously don't, I, or maybe not obviously, I don't have autism. Can't fully comprehend what it's like. But I feel like I have a decent idea. I've lived with someone that I wouldn't say is just low, low on the spectrum. I'd say he's in the middle. He's a lot better now. Yeah. Um, he's really gotten the social part down way better now. I mean, I just wonder what, like, the situation is. Like, why does she need to be in the car with the baby often? I mean. That's a great point. I just feel like you could avoid these situations. I mean, so I'm guessing, like grocery store run if like all three of them are running to the grocery yeah. store you know you want all three of them to get the groceries and load them in and out and stuff and then you know it's not your responsibility to like take care of your sister's kid like at night if she's waking you up yeah you just need to have headphones on and just don't go check on her just have headphones on with music or white noise or something playing that way you don't hear the baby it's not your responsibility to go check on her yeah, yeah. Also, I same thing I agree, in the car. I mean, I agree with you. I like your situ. I, I like your solution of, yeah. Why isn't the sister staying down with her daughter? Yeah. Why is the daughter not rooming with you? But yeah, why are you closer in proximity than your sister is? Yeah. I don't know. Weird situation. Yeah. Um, I'd say definitely not the a-hole, but I think that you're getting yourself worked up over really nothing. I mean, not nothing. You're getting yourself worked up when there doesn't really need to be. Yeah, the consensus seems like... Okay, so one of the comments... Um, if everything fails, so they're talking about solutions for this, um, like, and, you know, the baby uh, that's coming and the four-year-old, um, start calling sister's phone and tell her baby is crying. If OP doesn't get to sleep because of the baby, baby mama doesn't get to sleep either. Yeah. Yeah. Or just go bring screaming, crying baby to sister's bedroom and yeah, leave her outside it. the door or something. I mean, deliver it like a bomb. Yeah. Say hey. <laughs> and if sister doesn't respond, give it to grandma. Yeah. 
Not your job, not your baby. Because, yeah, ultimately, I guess even disregarding the guys <laughs> and stuff, um, there were probably precautions that could have been taken to prevent another child from coming. I understand that things fail, but... Yeah. It's on the mom. The mom had this kid, the both. And she should probably be doing more to take care of it at night. <laughs> Okay, do you want to call it wraps for today? Yeah. Okay. All right. Fun stuff. Yeah. Until next time. Yep. Bye. You're not going to say adios? Adios. <laughs>